Hello everyone and uh, welcome to a quick update. Today is the uh, 6th of uh, October. Uh, in front of us here we have what's about to become the uh, Edge Performance EP912 STI Gen 2. And um, you might wonder what's new with this Generation 2 engine. And it's actually quite a bit. So uh, first and foremost, all the uh, mechanical internals, um, gearbox, long block, turbo exhaust, all that's the same and the majority of those parts has been upgraded over the recent one to two years. So they're pretty much up to spec and uh, we're really happy with how all of that's working together. Now some of the changes that we have implemented now on the Gen 2 is uh, primarily electrically um, and engine ECU related. So I'll uh, We'll do a quick overview of the engine and I'll point out some of the uh, changes, upgrades that have been done over the previous models. So first of all, we start off with a brand new ECU. We will be using the same ECU as we have developed for our uh, EP917 Ti, uh, except we won't be using the secondary ECU, we'll be using the main black ECU body uh, for the 912 STI. Um, Additionally, come back here on the top of the crankcase. You can see down there, there's the sensor down there. It's hard to see, which is the knock sensor. And that will be used actively to, uh, for the ECU to listen for any signs of detonation and obviously uh, to uh, correct for that with the timing adjustments. There we get a better view of it. So that's one change. Second change we have done is that we have now incorporated a uh, fuel pressure sensor directly to the fuel rail so that the ECU both sees the fuel pressure, which is handy because you don't have to have an external one to display your uh, fuel pressure on your EFIS system. That will all be broadcasted now by a CAN bus from the ECU to your EFIS system. Uh, another great feature about having it tapped into the ECU um, is that the ECU will now be able to actually see the fuel pressure going through the fuel rails. And if there's any deviations, which may be caused by a uh, bad fuel pump or a clogged fuel filter or a low voltage, the uh, ECU will not just see a change in EGT and uh, AFR, but also it will sense a increase or decrease in fuel pressure and make timing adjustments on the injectors to compensate for that. So that's another very clever safety feature. Um, as you can see here now, we have on all four cylinders, we have EGT probe connectors. So we will have EGT probes, just like the 912, the 915, and also now the 916 IS engines, tapped directly into the ECU, which the ECU will use to run the engine in closed loop EGT. Come to the back here now, we have our crankshaft position sensor wheel and our crankshaft position sensor mount and sensor. And we have a new design wheel now, which is designed to work with electrically controlled ignition timing. So if you come up over to the uh, SMD modules, and first of all, if you look, we have now removed all the original Rotax pickups. We only have the tachometer pickup here, if anyone wants to use a uh, standalone tachometer. That can also obviously be removed quite easily with removing these two M5 bolts. Um, but most and foremost, rather than having the pickups tapped into the uh, S&D modules, we now have the ECU having full control over the ignition timing. So we still utilize the original um, charge coils on the flywheel to uh, generate our uh, ignition power. And we also use the original factory coils and uh, ignition modules, which are very reliable in themselves. But we have the ECU in full control over the ignition timing, which is very helpful to prevent detonation, to run a leaner AFR at cruise settings, to compensate for altitude, and so on. On the new wiring harness, we also have some connectors that I'll go through. This is a six pin connector, which is our wastegate servo. So we're still utilizing the well-proven electric servo wastegate. Uh, we no longer have an external Lambda controller. It's all now tapped into the wiring harness. 
and the ECU has a built-in lambda controller to uh, both heat and to um, read off the O2 sensor that we have in the exhaust. Here we have our chassis connector. It's an eight pin Deutsch connector, which is our powers and grounds. And then coming off the loom, we have another two connectors. So one being a four pin Deutsch connector, which is our warning and caution lights. And then we have our map switch, which can be used either to switch between two maps, a eco and a power map, or just simply a high and low boost. And then we obviously have our Molex ECU main connectors, there's two of them. Uh, additionally now, we have incorporated the uh, original oil temp sensor and the oil pressure sensor. And we have that now tapped into the wiring harness, directly fed to the ECU. Again, to um, make the wiring job as uh, easy and convenient as possible for the installer and allowing all the data to be fed into the ECU so that it can be displayed via two wires, CAN bus, in our EFIS systems. So that's a quick overview of the uh, new, so some of the new features. 912 STI Gen 2. We also have in the works now a um, revised oil pump cover, which will have a um, new cover, a new shaft, and also a camshaft position sensor, much like what we have on the uh, 917 TI. I'll show you real quick here. So that's the cam cover with a sensor port on it. And that will allow us to run the engine on uh, fully sequential ignition and fuel timing. So that's a quick update for this week. We'll be back on the dyno um, once we've got everything dialed in, up and running. And uh, we'll be back to present some uh, results and comparison data in terms of power and uh, efficiency, not least. So that's all for now. Hope you guys enjoyed and found it informative and uh, we'll see you on the next one.